Today I'm going to discuss online communication. My main claim is that modern communication technology undermines human communication. Modern communication technology is defined as any social media platform along with other forms of communication such as texting, emailing, and so forth. By it is undermining human communication, I'm referring to the negative consequences that our online-based culture has had on interpersonal communication as well as our relationships. People point to the benefits of online communication, saying that it is making us more social by uh, because we're able to network with more people, but not enough have looked at the costs. The secondary claims I will focus on are that modern communication is first, dis uh, disconnecting people from their environment, second, preventing meaningful bonds to form, and lastly, deteriorating our social skills. First, I'll demonstrate how and why online communication is disconnecting us from one another. When you're passing by in a hallway or standing in line, how often do you see people checking their phones as a way to exit their surroundings? Even at the dinner table with others, according to the Mobile Mindset Study, 30% of people uh, admit to using their phones. People aren't able to be present with one another fully anymore. Melissa Ortega, a child psychologist at New York Mind Child Institute said, clinically, I'm seeing it in the office. The high school kids who I do see will be checking their phones constantly. They'll use it as an escape, as an avoidance strategy. People no longer want to talk. In fact, the time mobility poll shows that 32% of people would prefer to text than talk. Um, Sherry Turkle, an MIT social psychologist, has an explanation to why we're becoming detached in person and connected online. She relates this to our need to control how we present ourselves. Because when we're texting or Facebooking or tweeting, we have the opportunity to control, edit, and delete what we write. But in person, we don't have this leisure time. She stated, when teens tell me that they'd rather text than talk, they are expressing another aspect of the new psychological affordances of the new technology, the possibility of our hiding from one another. Transitioning to my, secondary, to my second claim, I'll make clear why it is difficult to foster meaningful bonds because of this detaching behavior. Judith Olson, a professor of information and computer sciences at UC Irvine, conducted a study to see how our lost aspects of communication were affecting our formations of trust. She found that now people believe that you are more trustworthy based on how quickly you reply instead of your tone of voice. Because if you reply quicker, we assume that you are also invested in the conversation. Um, Melissa Ortega, a child, uh, oh, sorry, I'm sorry. Um, so an internet-based culture has made us redefine these terms such as friendship and trust and what it means to be a, a companion with one another. But the amount of uh, Facebook friends we have are not sufficient to the amount of relationships we have in the real world. Sherry Turkle said, digital technology can provide the illusion of companionship without the demands of friendship, without the demands of intimacy. A less intimate society does not leave room for meaningful relationships to form. Author Joseph Grenny reported that 89% of his 2025 individuals uh, conducted in his survey, survey said that electronic insensitivity damaged the relationship, and one in four said that it caused a serious rift. We're no longer able to connect with one another because we are connecting with our devices instead. Human relationships are complex, and we cannot, and we cannot replace them with sips of conversation online. This brings me to my last point that social media is deteriorating our social skills. People are simply not talking enough. Dr. Ortega, the child, the child psychologist, emphasized, they don't know how to handle conflicts face to face because so many things happen through some sort of technology. A neuroscientist at UCLA, Dr. Small, assumes that our brains are being uh, negatively rewired because we are not speaking enough face to face. Um, in fact, our neural circuits will not be able to strengthen human contact skills such as making eye contact, understanding, nonverbal body gestures, and so forth, because we're not practicing it enough. Patricia Greenfield, a psychology professor at UCLA, in regards to using modern communication technology said, losing the ability to understand the emotions of other people is one of the costs. And to prove this, she studied two sets of sixth graders from a Southern California public school 54, oh, 51 who had to live in the Poly Institute, which is a camp that um, doesn't allow technological devices, and 54 others who were not required to go to the camp. And after these students were given photos and videos to identify the emotions of the people in them, 
Um, the, uh, the average of errors, those that um, attended the camp, made 9.41 errors in comparison to 14.02 in the beginning. So this just proves that the students who didn't attend the camp did not have any significant change in their um, significant uh, difference in their results. So without proper investment in the physical world by stepping away from our de devices, our social skills and understanding, uh, understanding nonverbal body cues are eroding. After hearing the evidence backing my secondary claims that online communication is, um, is disconnecting people from our environment, hindering the formation of meaningful bonds, and dim diminishing social skills, you now have a clear understanding about how modern communication technology has undermined human communication. After all, as Trickle said, it is when we stumble or hesitate or lose our words that we reveal ourselves to each other. Thank you. All right, well, the proposition is very clear. The uh, structure is laid out for us. Uh, the definitions are okay. I'm not exactly sure that you need to underfine, uh, excuse me, define undermining, uh, uh, you know, as a term. I thought that that was relatively, you know, superfluous. Uh, the signpost on the first and the third points was pretty clear. Your transition to the second point basically said, let's transition to the third, second point, and that was a little bit awkward, but not a big deal. It was easy to follow the structure, like I said, was labeled consistently. I thought you did an excellent job citing the sources of your evidence and giving them qualifications so that we could understand uh, why we should be listening to these people and uh, judging whether or not their opinion uh, seems uh, satisfactory. There's very good statistical information on a couple of the points. Uh, some of the examples I think could be a little bit more elaborate. Uh, I think, for example, that there needed to be an explanation of what the um, uh, stuff was that you were talking about on that last point. Uh, it, you, the way you described it, this, the way you summarized it, it sounded like you were actually going the opposite direction of the claim. Now, ultimately, at the end, it comes back around to the way I thought it was supposed to be interpreted, but there was just some phraseology issue that was going on there that was a little bit confusing. And then on the um, stuff about rewiring the brain, I, it would be nice if there was some statistical support for that, because they were usually provided statistical, statistical information on all of the other points, and that one was, what, was one that mostly is just theoretical in nature, and I thought that there ought to be some uh, data backing it up. I thought it was very nicely presented and, like I said, easy to follow. Thank you. <laughs>